Hi, good morning. Welcome for joining me here today where we get to not only share God's word, but get to know more about God's character and how he builds relationship with us and how his immaculate love for us flows in every aspect of our lives. Now, I'm sure for some of you, you've heard of the butterfly effect. The idea that if a butterfly flaps its wings in India, it can, with small occurrences along the way, one event leading to another, leading to another, eventually create a tornado or a storm somewhere else in the world, like Madagascar, for example. Now, the idea of the butterfly effect is evident in movies like Final Destination, for example, where one little occurrence leads to another, leads to another. And eventually there's this big calamity or this big crisis that gets created because of one small effect or interaction or experience building up to the others. Did you know that the butterfly effect is an idea or concept that's evident in the Bible? In Genesis chapter 24, we read that Abraham is on his last. He's on his deathbed and he calls Eliezer, one of his servants, and he sends Eliezer to Mesopotamia, which is Abraham's birth country. He's his birth home. And he says to Eliezer, go there and go look for a wife for my son Isaac. Now let's read together from verse 12 to see that now that Eliezer has gone the distance, he's made the oath, he's taken 10 of Abraham's camels and a lot of finer things, and he's now traveled a long distance to get there. And as he gets to Mesopotamia, this is what happens. Verse 12 says, And he, this is Eliezer, said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show loving kindness, faithfulness to my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here at the spring of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the girl to whom I say, please let down your jar so that I may have a drink. And she replies, drink. And I will also give your camels water to drink. May she be the one whom you have selected as a wife for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown loving kindness, faithfulness to my master. So here's Eliezer and he's making this prayer to God. And he's like, Father, Lord of my master, this is what I, what I would like for you to help me with. This is the task that has been set in front of me. Can you please assist me with sending this, this beautiful girl? And when she's the one that you have chosen, this is how I will know that she is the one. And he says there that she's not only going to give him water, but also his camels. Now, this is the prayer that Eliezer has sent. Now, let's quickly read a little bit on and see how this plays out. And you'll see in a moment why. This is important. Verse 15. Before Eliezer had finished speaking or praying, Rebecca came out with her water jar on her shoulders. Rebecca was the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin and unmarried. And she went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she quickly lowered her jar to her hand and gave him a drink. When she had given Eliezer a drink, she said, I will also draw water for your camels until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trowel, ran again to the well, drew water with, for all his camels. And meanwhile, Eliezer, the man, stood gazing at Rebecca in reverent silence, waiting to know if the Lord had made his trip successful or not. Now, the beauty of this piece is I want you to think about the distance that Eliezer had to travel. Abraham asked Eliezer to do this task for him. Go to my homeland, go look for a wife for Isaac and bring her back here for Isaac to wed. 
Now here's this, this servant, and he's traveling this whole distance with 10 camels and all the good stuff that Abraham has to go and look for a wife for Isaac. And when he gets there, he has no idea. It's a foreign land. I mean, Eliezer is from Damascus, and now he's going to Mesopotamia, and he gets there, and he has no idea where to find this woman. And then he starts praying, and he's like, Lord of my master, this is how I will know that this is the wife that you have chosen for Isaac. And he sends his prayer asking her, asking God that if she comes and she waters, gives him water and waters his camels, then he'll know she's the one. Now I want you to think from the moment that Abraham asked Eliezer to do this, all the little things that had to happen. By the time Eliezer got there, who knows how long the distance or the journey was or how many days or weeks he had to travel. And then he gets there and only then does he decide, okay, let me ask God for help. And in the moment that he does the prayer, only then does he make his mind up, oh, this is a good idea. This is how I will know that she is what God has chosen for Isaac. And Lord, let this be the way that I will know that this is the, the woman that you have chosen. So he makes his mind up in the moment as he's making the prayer or as he's, as he's praying to God that this is how he will know that this is who God has chosen. And then he has barely finished praying. It says there in verse 13, before Eliezer had finished speaking or praying. So his prayer wasn't even done yet. And here comes Rebecca. Now I want you to, to just think of this for a moment. Abraham asked Eliezer to do this. Eliezer traveled, he got there, and then he made his mind up, and then he started praying. And before he was done praying, God already answered his prayer. Now think of it this way. It's not because of Eliezer's prayer that it was answered. God already knew when Abraham asked him to do this, things started falling into place. I mean, if you had to think of it, Eliezer had to get there in a specific time frame. Uh, while Eliezer got there, he still had to, you know, come up with the idea of this is how I know that this is the woman that God has chosen. On top of that, he still had to come up with how he's going to know the time of day that he arrived there. All of these things had to fall in place. Simultaneously, on Rebecca's side, she had to get up that morning, she had to get dressed, she had to get her, her jugs to, to go and get water, she had to leave the, the town where she was staying of Nahor, she had to, to move and, and walk up to the, the spring in order to go gather the water. All of those things had to coincide in order for Eliezer to meet Rebecca at the exact moment that Eliezer finished praying in order for his prayer to be answered by God. Now, the, the magnificence of this is to help you understand how God moves the universe in order to make things fall in place. How he is in control, not just of one little circumstance, but everything else in between to bring it together in order to answer not only your prayer, but every one of his children's, every one of you watching this, a child of God, every one of you and the prayers that you ask him, God already knows what's on your heart. God already knows what it is that you are asking of him. He knows your heartaches. He knows your sorrows. He knows your troubles. He knows the emotions and the thoughts and the ideas in your head. He knows every hair on your head that he has personally counted. So if he knows all of these things, and he is moving the universe and putting these things together in order to not just give you what you want, but to build a relationship with you, to show you how much he loves you. Isn't it time that you relinquish the worries and the fears and you move into faith knowing that the God that is in control of not just the universe and everything in it, but every small little detail that there is moving meticulously putting these things together in order to give the outcome that is in alignment with his will. How does that affect you? What does that do to your focus and your mindset? 
And that brings me to the, the exciting part of it in Romans. If we go to Romans 8, Paul says the following in verse 28. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to His plan and purpose. God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. It's His divine destiny for you. And as long as you move in alignment with that plan, with the will of God, with that destiny that God has set out for you, then everything will work according to God's plan and for the good of those who love Him. Now, we can show our love to God by not only showing obedience, but building the relationship with Him, spending time with Him, not just in prayer, but in every moment of the day, seeking Him, wanting to be near Him, wanting to be close to Him, because He wants to be close to you. He wants that relationship with you. He's moving the universe in order to show you that He wants to be with you. So thank you for your time. We're going to end in prayer and then let's take the rest of the day building that relationship, knowing that the God of everything moves every little small nuance in our lives to work out for our own betterment, for our own good. Father, I thank you that in this moment where we are aware of your presence, Holy Spirit, that we are aware that you are not only with us, right now, but in every breath that we take, every thought that we have, I ask that you guide us in your will so that we may fulfill the plan and destiny that you have set out for us. Jesus, I thank you for the love that you have for us. I thank you for the sacrifice that you have made, proving once and for all that you love us more than anything in creation. For this thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the great comforter, that you are with us, and that you will remind us that once we start focusing on the fears in life, on the worries in life, that that is simply the distractions of this world attempting to take us away from your divine will. And Holy Father, I thank you that your will, your plan, Your destiny for each and every single one of us is for our good and to help us according to your plan so that all things can work together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful week ahead. Have a beautiful weekend ahead. And may you at all times be aware of God's presence in your life. Thank you.